Hi guys, welcome back. Um, this is going to be kind of part two of my consultation video. I'm going to let you know about the paperwork that gave me on the first day and what it said. Um, so like I said, this was the paperwork I took home and I was supposed to look it over before going back um, to surgery day where I would fill it out and then have surgery. <laughs> um, I took a look at the first part of it and then I didn't want to look at it anymore because the first line of it was my worst fear which was like a statement that said I understand I have it here benefits and outcomes are not guaranteed <laughs> so basically this was like my personal fear that somehow I would make the decision go through this whole process and I would wake up and my vision would be the same and I would still need my glasses, which is why I still have them. Uh, that's just my craziness. That's just the crazy way I think. But that that is what I thought. So when I saw that, I was like, mm -mm, I'm not going to look at this <laughs> because I talked to the people um, there at the office or whatever and everybody and I, <laughs> I'm like such a worry wart. So I asked like all of them like. I was talking to the women at the front desk, I asked them, I was talking to the technicians, I asked them, and then I I asked everybody. I was like, so like, I know obviously, obviously with anything there's like risks and some things have happened and happen, but I was like, but it's not like likely that anything is going to happen right, and I asked them, <laughs> I asked all of them this separately so that they could all assure me, but actually it was very reassuring. Um, Marissa was one of the uh, ladies that helped me there. She was so, so, so sweet. I loved her to death. All of them. I loved all the, everybody that I talked with was so awesome. And like I said, answered all my questions. She was one of the first people I talked with. And so she answered a lot of questions from me. And I loved her answer for that question because she asked me, I mean, she, she goes, um, you see all the people out there in that hallway this morning when I went in, um, the hallway was full of people sitting there and sh she goes those were all the patients from yesterday and they're here for their checkup to the did their surgery yesterday they're here for their checkup today and they're all fine <laughs> and this is like what they do every day all the time even though it was a an unusual experience for me and like a big life moment for them it's like what they do every day and it goes great and they know what they're doing so it did make me feel a lot better so with their reassurance I didn't feel like I needed to read that paper, but I did read the paper before I signed it. Um, you know, and everything did go great. <laughs> so, uh, these were the things that I had to kind of initial on though. And, uh, you may be curious about these because you get this when you actually go to get LASIK done. So I'm going to let you know what it says. Um, so these are like the risks risks and side effects. So it says, number one, that they're not guaranteed, I guess, to take, uh, which is crazy. I don't think that that would happen. And also in my particular plan, which I believe was the premium LASIK plus advantage plan, or I don't know if that means anything, but that's what my paper said. Um, this was kind of like a lifetime guarantee thing. So obviously, especially the first time if they do surgery and it, it didn't work, you they would do surgery again you know <laughs> or there are several things that if they went wrong they would do the touch-ups but also for me that included my life it was like it's like a lifetime guarantee so in like 10 years if I have to go back um to get LASIK again it's included I just go back to LASIK plus and they're going to take care of me um or if anything happened you know so I feel really good knowing that like knowing that the price is not that bad, I feel like, which again, um, ended up being about $4,000 total for everything. Um, and you know, when that, in if that includes surgery now, and then in 20 years when I need surgery again, that is included. I mean, it's really not that bad for like such an enriching thing <clears throat> for my life. So anyways, that was the first one. Um, there's an over, the possible, um, side effects are over response or under response. So that would be like, they do it, but you don't have perfect vision. You still like need a little bit. So you still need to wear a little bit of glasses. 
Um, I didn't want that either because that's like not the same thing, but almost the same thing. You know, like I'm done with glasses. I'm paying to be done with glasses. So that's how I personally felt. Um, you're a change in astigmatism, which is kind of the same thing, just a change, but not all better. Uh, risk of infection, inflammation, haze, night glare and night, uh, trouble with night vision, increased sensitivity, lights and glares, halos. Those are, um, some of the big things I've heard about with LASIK, especially, I was a little worried because they described that in like the healing process that the first days I would be, um, sensitive to the light and I might notice those things um but actually I really didn't my eyes were hazy and tired I would say like blurry but I was mostly trying to keep them closed um all the first day and then like this morning and stuff really this morning I was so excited because I could see pretty good so I wasn't as careful as I was yesterday but yesterday I was very careful. I was constantly wearing either my goggles or my sunglasses, um, which I'll explain more in the surgery video next. But, um, so I was very careful, but I feel like my results were amazing. I really don't have, I, I don't feel like I don't have any sensitivity to light or any sense of distortion, halos, double vision with lights, anything like that, nothing. And this is day one, and it's supposed to be kind of an ongoing healing process. Um, some aspects they say will vary, like your vision, they say will vary for the first like week. Um, your comfort and dryness and things like that, they say will vary for the first like month. So there are several stages I think I'm gonna go through, but right away the next day, I just feel so good. So I feel very positive about the results. Um, so there could be a problem with the corneal flap, um, or the LASIK flap relifting procedure. If you're over 40, there's an increased chance that you'll still need reading glasses. There's also an incre increased chance that you'll need, um, repeat procedures, like, and not like the next year, but like in 10 years, which I still does, do not feel like is that bad, but it is a thing, so... I talked to a really nice lady who was there that day who had the procedure when she was over 40 and it was 11 years ago that she had it and she was there yesterday with me to have her touch up her first touch up after 11 years so she got her guaranteed 10 years I mean it's not guaranteed her estimated <laughs> um 10 years but she also had a son who had LASIK, but he was under 40 when he had his, and he had um, 15 years before he had to go for a touch-up. So again, that's a really long period of time. Now that I've had the surgery, I can say it's not a bad thing to have to revisit. It's not like a huge dangerous thing where you're put under and you're opened up or anything like that. It's such a quick procedure and that's now. So in 10 years, I can't even imagine how much easier it's going to be. So I don't mind that and the fact that it's included with the cost, again, I really don't mind that. So I think that's totally reasonable. But if you're right around that 40 age range and you're thinking about it, I would just say go ahead and do it. If you know you want to do it, do it before you're 40 because it is going to make a difference for how you heal and how you have to repeat or if you have to repeat the process. Um, so I think timing is key on that. Uh, there's the chance of dryness. That one is like a huge one. I feel like that one has been around the whole time I've learned about um, LASIK and it's still around and it's very likely but I think that's why they gave me like hella eye drops <laughs> and they were like use them all you need and I keep having to remind myself because I'm the type of person that I'm like no I'm fine it's just a little itchy it's just a little dry and then I won't do it I have to remind myself my eyes need it because they're healing right now. So um, I am doing the drops. I have a little table where I'm writing down my Medicaid drops and then the, just the moistening tear ones. And the more you use those in the beginning, the better your healing is supposed to be. So I am trying to do that because I want to heal up perfectly and not need those artificial tears later in life, like after the procedure. Um, so there's that. Uh, there's 
double vision, further treatment, equipment malfunction, um, but everything was very up to date and nice. Uh, the risk of doing both eyes at once, because like I said, you can have the option of doing one eye at a time. So if you're super scared of like the worst case scenario that something goes super wrong and you know, blindness <laughs> or anything like that, you do have the option to get one eye worked on and then the other eye worked on. Um, for me, I didn't want to have to go through this whole thing twice. Now knowing what it is like, it's not that bad. Like for touch-ups in the future, if I had to do it, I could do them separately, but I wanted them done. <laughs> um, other complications. So that was pretty much everything I signed on the way in. And again, I don't really feel like it was super, super necessary. I mean, of course, um, it's necessary to mention it, but everything did turn out really good and they were all very certain it was going to turn out really good so it was a great um experience i also asked a lot of questions so i'll let you know some of the questions i asked because although everybody was super helpful in answering the questions these were not things that they were telling me on their own it's because i asked so many questions that i got so much information um they did also let you know let me call constantly let me message um whatever I needed to ask them more stuff if I needed to so they were very helpful but some of the stuff that I asked and this was just like what was relevant to me what I was thinking about was number one I asked um if I would have to limit my use of like electronics tv phone things like that the next day or like in the following days while I heal and the answer was no <laughs> which I was very surprised about uh, they were like, no, you can just uh, live normal. And I was like, oh, wow. okay. Um, swimming. Uh, they did let me know that there's, I should not swim for something like two weeks. And you're also just not supposed to get water in your eyes. So like, I was really nervous about showering after the procedure because I didn't want to get any water in my eye. I normally get shampoo and everything in my eyes. So... That was going to be a challenge for me, but with lots of, you know, careful patience, um, I was able to get that done safely. Thank goodness. Um, but that was one of my questions. So no swimming. So do plan for that. Um, makeup. They said about a week, week before you can do makeup. And then I do or have done, have been doing the little individual lashes. So they told me about two weeks uh, before I want to try to do that. I'm going to do more because I've gotten glue in my eye doing that. I don't want that going on right now. Like, you need to be careful with these sensitive eyes. I do have this little dot. Um, that was there after surgery, but I didn't notice it at first because I was very, like, having my eyes closed in the beginning. But it doesn't hurt or anything. Nothing hurts. Um, I didn't go through any pain or discomfort. Uh, so don't worry. <laughs> um, I was going to ask them if I had a scheduled checkup. And they did let me know when I was getting ready to have this, when I was like going in for surgery, that they wanted to see me Monday. I had my um, surgery Friday, yesterday, and they want to see me Monday. Um, to make sure that everything is healed and then once they do that then my doctor will let me know that I can return to like normal activities uh, I asked what I can do about the pain at home and basically it was just Tylenol PM um, which I also asked about I um, I have ang I've had anxiety in my life pretty bad and right now it's not that bad but something like surgery is something that can bring back anxiety so I was nervous about the procedure and I was nervous about um, going home afterwards because what they want you to do is sleep through the um, pain and discomfort of the first two to four hours. Now, supposedly if you sleep through it, your eyes heal and you wake up and you're pretty good. Um, but I was really worried that I was going to be so nervous that I was not going to be able to fall asleep and that I was going to be awake for that whole not good process and then my eyes wouldn't even heal because they have to be closed and they have to be ideally asleep so they can be healing um 
but they let me know that they just recommend Tylenol PM. They actually included it that day for me to take right after the procedure. Um, I guess both for the pain and then to help me go to sleep, um, which I did all right with, uh, and it wasn't really an issue. And then when I woke up, there was no pain. There was no discomfort. So I was really fine. Uh, I did hear about this ahead of time and I did ask about it because I live in San Antonio with San Antonio heat. Um, you can't be around fans after because they're blowing all this air and drying out your eyes. So you can't sleep in a room with a fan. I think you cannot really hang out in a room with a fan. So it's been hot. <laughs> it's been kind of hot. Um, I have been wearing my goggles that they gave me, which I'll give you a little peek at. Uh... There we go. These funny things. They gave me these in my little surgery kit. And um, I have been wearing them to help keep all of the air out. I think it helps a lot for the comfort. Even though I'm just supposed to really wear them to sleep. But I'm crazy like that. So <laughs> I'm just being really careful. Um, let's see. And then they gave me the moisture drops, um, the medicated ones, which are on a schedule, and the other ones for comfort. Those are not really on a schedule, they're when you need it. So I did ask, is it possible to overdo those drops? Like, is there a limit to how much I can use those drops, like if I'm very uncomfortable with my eyes? And they were like, nope, not really any limit. You're supposed to do one drop at a time, and you're supposed to do them like five minutes apart, but you can keep doing them if you need. They're not medicated or anything, so um, it's okay. So, again, I ended up being really comfortable. I loved the staff that I worked with. Um, everybody. Everybody in the front office. Everybody that helped me that day. And then I didn't meet my doctor at all during the consultation. I didn't meet him until... Well, he actually gave me a phone call the night before my procedure to see if I had any questions or anything, which was so nice. I did get to ask him some last minute questions. And then I met him in person right before my procedure and the procedure was so fast. Um, so again, I'll cover that in the next video. But uh, that was kind of my first day. Everything that I went over, we went over the payments, set that all up, and then I was just ready to go in for surgery. So I will cover that in my next video. Again, as always, if you have any questions, comments, anything I didn't cover, anything you want more info on, feel free to comment it. If you watch this video, definitely feel free to comment. Tell me who you are and where you're from because I would just love to know. And um, that's it. Thank you so much.